Well, hello and good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions. It is a it is a production of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church right here in Allen Park, Michigan. I um, come together here at 9 a.m. Eastern Time live on our Facebook page and then later on, always available for later viewing on that page and also on our YouTube channel. We are a Presbyterian church in Allen Park and that's southwest of Detroit, but right, right, like tucked right in there. And um, it's called the Downriver area. So um, Allen Park uh, kind of is at the top of that area and it keeps running down south and um, so that's where we are but where are you today i know many of us local to the allen park area but we have people that join us from all over as i started to say before my name is tim marvel i am the minister at the allen park presbyterian church it's my honor to be that minister and we get together every morning at nine most mornings well mondays through thursdays most times, <clears throat> most weeks. How's that for being non-specific? You know, unless there's something special going on. And, and uh, but we are here today, and it is Thursday, December twenty-eighth. I pray everyone is having a uh, quiet post-Christmas time. But you know what? There's all sorts of life going on around us, and I know that there's people that are. Uh, undergoing medical procedures and treatments and some have some coming up and there's folks that are in the hospital and um, we need to pray for all those folks and we do we do that'll be what we'll do at the end here but in the meantime if you're joining us either live or if you're watching us later say hi down in the comment section and I know that we have a lot of our usual folks that show up and do that so I'll go down there and just say hello <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a tickle in my throat. And, uh, excuse me. If you're joining us in the morning, I hope you have your morning beverage with you today, because that's kind of what this is like. We're sitting around, we're going to talk about the news, <laughs> not gossip news, and then we're going to, and then we're going to read four pieces of scripture together, and then uh, we will pray after that. So going down here to see how how many of our friends are doing. Hi Sandy. Don and Katie are with us and happy happy Ken. Hi Judy. There's Carrie and there's she actually put that link right in there. That's the best way to know anything about the, our church. Right? And that's www.allenparkpres p e I'm sorry, p r e s .org. allenparkpres.org. Nobody can spell Presbyterian, so we wanted to keep it out of the name, uh, at least uh, for people can get, I mean, as far as the link, so people can get to it. All right. So, and Carrie is our very able communications manager, and she uh, she handles all of our social media stuff, does a wonderful job. Probably convinced me to do this show, I think, <laughs> was, was, was the driving force behind it. I think I had the idea, but she, she made sure that I followed up on it. And they also have a show uh, that'll uh, be here tomorrow, Friday, at 9 a.m., because I won't be. This is Monday through Thursday. So uh, they will be here with the Good News Live, and um, it's uh, they do a wonderful job. That's more of a talk show oriented. They do wonderful interviews with folks. Judy, how are you? Barry and Margo, good morning. Hi, Paul. And uh, Paul, uh, if you come to church... Paul uh, has been dressing the part of uh, most liturgical seasons. <laughs> I've never seen anybody match the colors of the Advent candle, but Paul did. <laughs> so, um, but we also have this coming Sunday. It's New Year's Eve, right? We can have some fun, all right? New Year's, New Year's Eve. So um, if you want to come bedecked and bedazzled, hey, you might show up on TV, you never know. But uh, if that's something that we can do to make it fun um, and so that we can give thanks for the year that's passed, you know, and there's a lot of bad stuff that's happened too. So we got to kick that to the curb. All happening on Sunday. So 
come on by. So anyway, that all started with saying hi to Paul. Hi, Linda Wolf. Nancy is with us, and Kevin and Chris. Norma, good morning. Okay, Ann, your surgery is tomorrow. Praying for great results on those eyes, right? Hi, Helen England. Hi, Kip. Libby Walton, hello. And uh, All right, and Joanne Butters, hello. Joy and Steve Yambork coming to us. We have lots of friends from that Concord area that join us, and a few from that Homer Tecuncha area too, like Larry and Carolyn. All right, we have 21 viewers, so that is like really good. We got to get move on. We got to move on here if we're going to do this. So news of the world. Still pray. Still pray. Saw, so, saw. So, uh, I read a report on um, Christmas in Bethlehem, the real Bethlehem. And, um, how there wasn't any, um, and, and a whole, um, whole groups of people who have developed livings around the, the pilgrims that come to Bethlehem at Christmas time. And, um, uh, so we pray for an end to this violence and the killings wherever they occur in the world. But Lord, we pray, um, uh, we pray for peace because peace opens doors opens doors. Everybody benefits. Okay. That's it for my news, right? Because it's between Christmas and New Year's. Nothing's going on at the church. In fact, it's a little cold at the church this morning. The, uh, the, uh, we're having furnace problems again. So, and it, and it's, but at any rate, we'll get them fixed. It'll be fine by Sunday. And if not, we'll let you know. All right. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to get all the busyness out of my head by saying, and, uh, participating in my breathing exercise. I breathe in for a count of five, hold it for five, exhale for five. If you'd like to, right, I invite you into this. Here we go. Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Excuse me. I want to make a note here. Okay. All right. Very good. Let's see. One more thing before I do this. Now we're ready. All right. I'm ready to read God's word for us today. I hope, you're, I hope you're in a receiving mode. Okay. Let's read this together because that's what opens up the doors. All right. First devotion, Psalm 2. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Why do the nations conspire? and the peoples plot in vain. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. With trembling, kiss his feet, or he will be angry, and you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. 
happy are all who take refuge in him. So in this reading of the word of the Lord, all thanks be to God. You follow along with us. You know, this isn't one that we read very often. And, and I don't pick these readings. These are the ones that come up on this daily lectionary that we use. Wow. Just a caution to everybody. And um, especially to the nations. The nations conspire. What do they conspire? They can conspire against their own people. They conspire together against other nations. People's plot on a more individual basis. Talks about what's coming. Now, we're going to move into our, this is odd. This just doesn't happen that often, right? So we now go over into our historical prophetic reading, which is Isaiah, right? So we do that, and then we usually jump over into a New Testament reading, right? But if we look, right, that reading, well, you don't, you don't have to look, I'll, I'll tell you. But our prepared lectionary text for us, for that usual epistle letter in the New Testament, is another reading in Isaiah, which, um, you know, I, I love Isaiah. I, there isn't a book of the Bible that I don't, that I dislike. You know, it's just some of them I think are more useful to me. And that's dangerous because I might pick just the ones that I want. So we have like lectionaries like we use, which and, and which I we also are currently using um, in our worship schedule, which make which makes you confront confront the texts that make you feel uncomfortable, right? Or embrace the ones that you might not see it, so we can see situations um, in in other ways. That's the, that's the true benefit of the lectionary, you know. But the disability of the, of the lectionary is the fact that sometimes you're preaching on stuff that just seems like not even connected, right? So we have to be careful with that. So that's what we're going to do here is this Isaiah reading. And we're going to read, it's a long reading, so I'm going to get on it. And now the first one is out of chapter 49. It's verses 13 through 23. And I just want to give just a, an edge of context to this. Um, we think that Isaiah itself was laid down in with three um, three separate things that might have been you know then pushed together because at those boundaries which deal with time more than anything else when you when we take these three things and put them together the that overlap area gets kind of really busy because it's it's actually two stories becoming one um, so we can, can kind of see that in the way that Isaiah lays itself out but more so than that we know that this is also um, there's this big change of heart in Isaiah, right? Where, where all this punishment and you're, you know, you're, you're worshiping other gods, you're not practicing justice, all this other stuff, and, and desolation and um, taking, taken away from, from Jerusalem and, and put into a faraway land, what we know as the diaspora. And then it changes, right? And comes back, right? And uh, says, return. Return now. We know historically that that happens under Cyrus, um, but um, we also think that there was a little bit of cajoling that needed to be done to get people moving <laughs> back to Jerusalem, because nobody that had ended up in anywhere in the Diet, I mean Babylon for one, but there was other places. Um, nobody was there that had actually made that move. They had they were second and third generation people, this was their homes, you know, and they're saying, hey, go back to this place, which we've heard about, but I've never been there. Um, how many people are willing to just pick up and go? So we think that there's a little bit of urging that happens, and this is happening right here in this first reading. So Isaiah 49, 13 through 23. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget. Yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. 
Your walls are continually before me. Your builders outdo your destroyers. And those who laid you waste go away from you. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather. They come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall put all of them on like an ornament. And like a bride, you shall bind them on. Surely your waste and your desolate places and your devastated land, surely now you will be too crowded for your inhabitants. And those who swallowed you up will be far away. Then children born in the time of your bereavement will yet, will yet say in your hearing, the place is too crowded for me. Make room for me to settle. Then you will say in your heart, who has borne me these? I was bereaved and barren, exiled and put away. So who has reared these? I was left all alone. Where then have these come from? Thus says the Lord God, I will soon lift up my hand to the nations and raise my signal to the peoples, and they shall bring your sons into their bosom, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. With their faces to the ground they shall bow down to you, and lick the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who wait for me shall not be put to shame. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. See, I think that context means everything. Uh, when, when I... When I look at this and, and let it rest on me, um, you know, the, there, there's a there's one word in here that <laughs> I I used to use when I was in business, right? Um, let's see if I can find it here. Um, your builders, right? Your builders will uh, exceed uh, your evil doers. <laughs> so. When I was in business, I always said, well, we, we're not seeking perfection. We're just seeking the place where the good stuff that we do, right, um, uh, out, outdoes the bad stuff that we do. <laughs> so, and I use that as an example of what, what, what would be mediocre, right? And, uh, so anyway, that's not how God is using this here. He's saying that you have a promising future ahead of, ahead of all of you, all of us. All right, now we got another kind of long reading, and this is Isaiah 54, so we're jumping ahead uh, in not only chapters, but also time, and uh, about this return to the land. And not only to the land, because the land is big to the Hebrew people, because that was the promise, right, that was made to Abraham, and also descendants. So we've seen a return to the land and um, a return uh, to offspring and children in the promise. Uh, so it was really big. Uh, here we go. We're going to continue to read in Isaiah. Sing, O barren one who did not bear, burst into song and shout, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the sight of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Do not be discouraged, for you will not suffer disgrace, for you will forget the shame of your youth and the disgrace of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you. Like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit. Like the wife of a man's youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandon you. But with great compassion I will gather you. Overflowing wrath for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. 
This is like the days of Noah to me. Just as I swore that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, I am about to set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphire. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of jewels, and all your wall of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the prosperity of your children. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So the promises of land and progeny are being uh, illumined and lifted up here. Uh, words of comfort, things are going to get better. Um, and uh, But not only just for a little bit, but forever. So this last one, you're afflicted, you're storm-tossed, you're not comforted, you feel anything but at home. Hey, guess what? I'm about, I'm about to set your stones, your foundation in antimony, metal right? Won't be moved, right? And then I'm going to beautify this thing. Now, here's an interesting thing is when we talk to people who had near-death experiences, you know, and, and we always talk about the streets of gold and all this other stuff. I have to say that uh, there's many of them, more enough that, that have had this near-death, uh, you know, experience and talk about seeing this bedazzlement. So uh, that gives me comfort when I or something like that, and then I, I read this in Scripture, right? I think I, it, it affirms what I believe to be truth. All right, now we've got to move on. We're going to continue on in Matthew, and we're in chapter 18, verses 1 through 14. And uh, so um, lots of teaching going on here, and um, we're also getting to that point in Matthew where... Um, Jesus is trying to fill them uh, because the time when he's not going to be with them is, is approaching. So, let's just read God's word for us here out of Matthew. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the hell of fire. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd was, has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain? and go in search of the one that went astray. If he finds it, truly, I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not. So is it not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost? So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All oh, thanks be to God. Now I'm going to tell you something that, that might cause you to pause. And then your mind think about it a little bit, and then you go, whoa, right? We 
just we're kind of continuing our readings in Matthew. I mean, yesterday we read out of Matthew too, not not two, but Matthew also, right? And back then, um, he's talking to his disciples, and kind of out of nowhere, he calls them little children. It happened just before this. And then the disciples come and they want to know who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And think about where this question is coming from. This is a very human, um, this is a, a, a human condition that we exist in, right? That we need to set these social orders, right? And uh, so, hey, when we get to heaven, which one of us is going to be greater? This is really kind of a, I mean, n knowing what we know and how this ends up, we have to look at this and, and that go, why are they asking that question? But Jesus uses this, right, as a teaching moment. And he teaches, it, it's even it's even more greater than that, right? Because what? how does he teach? He talks about, hey, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So he grabs a kid, right? And he says, it doesn't say that the child is greatest in kingdom. He says, unless you change and become like children. I called you little children, so you have that capacity. But, right? Who's the greatest? Well, you got to become humble. Right? you got to become grateful. What, what is a life of being humble looks like? It's not a life of mediocrity at all, although some people might think so. But being humble just means that you've got a confidence. Um, that you don't need uh, to try to gain an advantage over anybody by saying, I'm greater than you because I can you know, write better than you, speak better than you, earn more money than you, whatever that separation might be. That's that stumbling block. So he says, this is a stumbling block. Thing. Who's the greatest in heaven? That's a, if you teach that to these children, then it's better for you that if a great, big millstone, you know, uh, was around your neck. And, you would, okay. and then he talks about the things that we, our own lives cause us to stumble. Right? And then he says, nobody wants to be, it doesn't want to lose anybody. Right? This is going to continue on. I've got, you know, I don't know where we're going to pick this up because this is my Friday, right? This is Thursday. But if we continued on in Matthew, we would see that the that the succeeding lessons here, if you read it in a continuum, we can see that it becomes the value that God has is as great as a, a sheep, you know, that he would go looking for um, as other value, valuable stuff. And then it comes down to the value of a son. So there you go. All right. So I, I took a little bit longer today, right? Because there's an awful lot here that I just, uh, I mean, when I looked and saw the readings, I was like, wow, there's just so much here. I hope you guys found this nearly as rich as I did. All right. Let's go back over here and just see if there's anything here. Thank you, Carrie, for putting these up. And uh, there we go. So I'm going to talk. And so we need to pray for some folks. All right. So we got sick people. We got all kinds of people. Well, some of the people that we're um, praying for are really, really, really. I'm. I'm going to talk. <clears throat> They're not greatest in heaven, right? But a priority of prayer <laughs> is that is that is that a heavenly thing? Probably not. So it's just what I mentioned here first. So Nathan Provo, we continue to pray for. Um, they uh, have taken a wait and see. Um, this is, uh, he had a, a surgical procedure to repair something and then there might be some complications. So they're just trying to figure out where his problems are coming from. He's suffering terribly from headaches. So we do pray, um, we do pray um, uh, for Nathan and uh, of course, his entire family, right? And uh, 
Ann. We're praying for you as you undergo your surgery, right? And um, Evelyn Smith, we also pray. She's undergoing surgery today. So those are people that I'm going to put right up there, not because anybody else is less important, but those are looming here. And then we have prayers. For, so all of these we're going to lift up in prayer. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Lord, uh, we know that uh, there's a wave of sickness going around this time of year anyway. And uh, we know that there's a number of people that have gotten uh, the flu or COVID or this uh, RSV. So, Lord, whoever might be uh, sniffling or worse, Lord, we would pray that these people would recover quickly. And uh, we always pray, Lord, for the people who have uh, ongoing medical issues and that need continuing diagnosis and treatment. Some of this treatment is such so long-term and it can get tiring, Lord. So we pray for all who are undergoing treatments for cancer. We pray all who are, um, we pray for, we pray for people who uh, don't have diagnoses that easily explain what's going on but continue to search. Lord, that's grinding and wearing on people. And it causes them to, well, first it causes anger. And we know that you can handle anger. So we would just ask that these people, if they feel put upon, might just rage at you. And then in the midst of the emptiness that exists after that rage, that they might, just accept your comfort that comes. Let them know, just like the people in Babylon needed to know, that the time was coming when you were going to do great things in their lives. So we lift up all the people that we've mentioned. Anne and Mason and Evelyn. Lord, guide their doctors to fully healing conditions. And Lord, you complete that healing by filling them emotionally and spiritually. We ask this for all of us, and Lord, as we face a, a new year coming, give us the humbleness that we might realize the wonderful ways you did work in our lives. And Lord, the pain that we've had during this course of this year, we would ask you that you give us the freedom to boot that out of uh, causing how our next year might be. We do ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Amen, all. God bless you. Remember this. I love you. God loves you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. I hope to see many of you in person on Sunday. If not, join us for worship and uh, as we go forth into this world, right? Just recognize that we always go Right, this because this is the last time. This is the last time I'm going to get a chance to do that this this year, for many of you. But as we go out, remember that we go out what with the love of God, the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray. Let your peace pervade. Amen. God bless you all. You have a wonderful day in the Lord, and we'll see you soon.